You could earn more with tips, but should you buy them? Hello, members and super savers. I hope you're having a good week. Here's where tips real yields are at the time of this taping. And here is the expected real yield and the coupon that Fidelity is predicting for the upcoming five-year tips auction this Thursday, April 18th. While these numbers can and usually do change all the way up to the date and time of the actual auction, there's still quite a bit more than the current I-bond fixed rate, as you can see here. As many of our Diamond Nest Egg regulars know, TIPS stands for Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, and the real yield on TIPS is essentially equivalent to the fixed rate on I-bonds. I-bonds are the other type of inflation-protected security that the Treasury offers. And depending on how much inflation you expect going forward, the five-year tips could also be more attractive than a normal non-inflation-protected Treasury note. If you add your inflation expectation for the next five years to the guaranteed real yield of the tips, and the sum of both is higher than the quoted nominal rate on the non-inflation-protected five-year T-note, then it may still make sense for you to buy the tips for a better overall return. So you could earn more with tips than I-bonds and potentially even more than a normal non-inflation protected five-year T-note, depending on future inflation. But should you buy tips? As our bond beginners course folks have heard me say often, I-bonds and tips both help protect you against inflation and they share a few similarities. But in my mind, they are in some respects more different than they are similar. And that's what we'll be talking about in today's video, I-bonds versus tips, and why some investors prefer one over the other for inflation protection as they get closer to retirement or are already in retirement. As usual, here's our front of video disclaimer. For a detailed disclaimer, please refer to the end of this video. Timestamps have also been included below for your convenience. Let's dive in now, folks, to I-bonds versus tips, taken directly from a brand new Bond Beginners course. In this video, we'll be talking about the similarities and differences between I-bonds and tips, why some investors prefer one over the other, as well as why we have both I-bonds and tips in our personal portfolio. Let's start first with the five similarities between I-bonds and TIPS. One, both are issued and explicitly backed by the U.S. government, meaning that for all practical purposes, both are free of credit risk, free of default risk. Two, both protect us, help us hedge against inflation, albeit in somewhat different ways. As we mentioned earlier, with I-bonds, the inflation adjustment happens via the I-bond interest rate. And with TIPS, it's via the TIPS principal value. Three, both are adjusted for inflation based on CPIU, the consumer price index for all urban consumers. Four, both I-bonds and TIPS can be purchased via Treasury Direct. And five, Interest earned on both is subject to federal income taxes, but not to state and local income taxes, assuming you hold your tips in a normal taxable brokerage account. So those were the five easy similarities between I-bonds and tips. Now, let's talk about the nine differences between I-bonds and tips. And yes, despite the fact that both are designed to offer fixed income investors inflation protection, Personally, I do think that I-bonds and TIPS are in some respects more different than they are similar. And let's talk about these nine key differences between I-bonds and TIPS within the framework of these nine must-know I-bond basics, all of which we'll put in this I-bonds column on the left-hand side. So, difference number one. I-bonds are always 30-year U.S. government savings bonds. TIPS are available in five-year, 10-year, and 30-year terms. Difference number two, the only way you can buy I-bonds or redeem them is via Treasury Direct. With TIPS, you have more options. You can buy TIPS via Treasury Direct or a brokerage company and either hold them to maturity or sell them before they mature to a willing buyer on the secondary market, like T-bills, T-notes and bonds, and FRNs, basically. Difference number three, 
With iBonds, the minimum amount you can buy is $25 per order, with an annual iBond purchase limit of $10,000 per individual currently, and up to an additional amount of $5,000 per tax refund. Now, there are certain individual circumstances under which you can buy more, and we'll get to that very soon. But with tips, the minimum and maximum amounts are higher. The minimum amount you can buy is $100 via Treasury Direct, and usually $1,000 via the leading brokers. With a maximum purchase limit of $10 million per auction in a non-competitive bid, and in unlimited amounts on the secondary market. Difference number four, the I-bond interest rate changes every six months. Remember, the interest rate is how I-bonds change with or adjust to and grow or shrink with inflation. With TIPS, it's the principal value that changes with or adjust to and grows or shrinks with inflation on a daily basis. If you need a refresher on this or any of the other tips points that we touch upon in this module, then it may make sense to go back to the last module on tips here and to review some of those videos again. As I've mentioned before, tips are not the most straightforward to understand, regardless of whether you're a fixed income newbie or not so newbie. Moving on now to difference number five, I bonds earn interest monthly but that interest is only paid out to you in cash when you redeem your I-bonds, whereas the interest payment on tips is paid out to you in cash every six months. Difference number six, I-bonds have a minimum 12-month holding period. With tips, there's generally no minimum holding period if you purchase via a leading broker. You can sell your tips at any time once they're in your account. Do recall though, if you buy your tips via Treasury Direct, you are locked into a 45 day minimum holding period before you can transfer those tips out of Treasury Direct to a bank, broker, etc. This transfer process out of Treasury Direct can take anywhere from a few weeks to a few months. And only once it is complete and the tips are actually in your bank or brokerage account, will you be able to sell them via your bank or broker. Difference number seven. If you redeem your I-bonds after the minimum 12-month holding period, but within the first five years, there is an early withdrawal penalty of the last three months' interest. There is no early withdrawal penalty for cashing out your tips before maturity, but you will need to sell them on the secondary market via broker, and you will have to accept whatever the secondary market price is. Which brings us neatly to difference number eight. With I-bonds, when you cash out, you will always get back your principal or par value, plus the interest earned up to the point of redemption, less any applicable early withdrawal penalty. As with difference number seven here between I-bonds and tips, the only way to cash out of your tips before maturity is to sell them on the secondary market via a broker, and you will have to accept whatever the secondary market price is. And this price may be higher, or lower than what you originally paid for your tips, meaning you may not always get back your principal or par value with tips when you cash out before maturity, as you would with I-bonds. Do recall though, from our earlier tips module, if you hold your tips to maturity, at maturity, you will always get back the higher of your initial principal value, the par value, or your inflation adjusted principal value. Moving on now to difference number nine. As a default, taxes on I-bond interest earned are due only when you redeem your I-bonds. With tips, taxes on your semi-annual interest payments are due annually, and any increases in the inflation-adjusted principal value of your tips are also taxable in the year in which they occur, even if your tips have not matured. As I mentioned towards the beginning of this video, while there are some similarities between I-bonds and tips, I-bonds and tips are in some respects more different than they are similar in my mind, as you can see from these nine key differences we just discussed. So let's talk briefly now about why some investors prefer tips while others prefer I-bonds. And let's do it using these nine key differences that we just walked through. Starting with tips this time, the primary reasons for why some investors prefer tips they like the choice of tips maturities, the ability to buy tips via their broker, the higher tips purchase limits, the fact that tips interest is paid out in cash every six months, 
that there is no minimum holding period and no early withdrawal penalty. Basically, the fact that they have the option to sell their tips on the secondary market if they ever choose to. And probably the biggest reason why some investors have a preference for tips over I-bonds right now as we're putting this course together, tips have higher real yields than I-bonds currently. Remember, the real yield on tips is basically equivalent to the fixed rate on an I-bond. Both represent how far ahead of inflation an investor is. And as you may recall from this earlier chart, this green line represents the real yield on five-year tips at the time of this taping. This yellow line represents the real yield on 10-year tips. And this blue line represents the fixed rate on I-bonds, which basically have the lowest real yield currently among these three inflation-protected securities. But a word of warning about tips real yields being higher than the I-bond fixed rate. As you can see here, as well as here, this isn't always the case. So if this tips real yield versus the I-bond fixed rate is important to you, make sure to compare the real yields on tips to that of the fixed rate on an I-bond at the time you're watching this video to see where the latest numbers stand. If you're a diamond nest egg regular, you should know that this is also something that we keep a close eye on. So we'll keep you posted with our YouTube videos as the market environment evolves. So now that you know why some investors prefer tips, let's talk about why some investors prefer I-bonds. We'll need to go to the second page for this. Some investors prefer I-bonds because of this reason here. You know that if you buy $10,000 of I-bonds, you'll earn interest on that $10,000. The interest rate changes every six months in May and November based on inflation. And whenever you redeem your $10,000 of I-bonds, you get back that $10,000 plus interest earned minus any applicable early withdrawal penalty. I typically summarize the beauty of I-bonds with our three S's. I-bonds are safe, I-bonds are stable, and I-bonds are simple. Safe not just because they're guaranteed by the full faith and credit of our country, but safe because when you cash out, even before maturity, you will always get back your principal. The same can't be said for tips. Remember, the secondary market will dictate what price you will get if you have to sell your tips and cash out before maturity. Stable because you don't have to worry about the price of your I-bonds going up or down wildly on the secondary market like you would with tips. Because, well, I-bonds are non-marketable. They don't trade on the secondary market. What you see in your Treasury Direct account is what you get when you redeem those I-bonds. You don't have to worry about suddenly getting a lower price because you can't find a buyer on the secondary market or because the Bureau of Labor Statistics released a lower-than-expected inflation report. And simple. Let's face it. I-bonds are less complex than tips, which brings us to another reason why some investors prefer I-bonds. I-bond taxes are also less complex than tips taxes. Remember that as a default, taxes on I-bond interest earned are due only when you redeem your I-bonds. This is relatively simple compared to the tax complexity of tips. Plus, if you qualify, you can avoid taxes on I-bond interest earned by using it to pay for higher education. Restrictions apply, so if you are interested in this, I've included the Treasury Direct link for this in the description below. And finally, the last key reason for why some investors prefer I-bonds. I-bonds can be used as an inflation-protected emergency fund. As many of our diamond nest egg regulars know, that's why we keep adding I-bonds to our personal portfolio. For us, I-bonds serve a dual purpose. First, as inflation protection, and second, as an ongoing emergency fund, once we've held them for the minimum 12-month holding period. Tips do not work well as an inflation-protected emergency fund, given the lower liquidity of the tips secondary market, as we discussed in the last module. If we ever needed to sell our tips in an emergency situation or during times of uncertainty, we would likely have to accept a significant secondary market discount on the sale of those tips. Again, with I-bonds, we always know what we'll get back. They're shielded from the ups and downs of the secondary market. I-bonds are safe, stable, and simple. And that's why they work well as an inflation-protected emergency fund for us. So our personal situation is that we have both I-bonds and tips in our personal portfolio. There is no rule that says you have to buy only tips or only I-bonds. 
are I-bonds. We use our I-bonds as an ongoing inflation-protected emergency fund once the minimum 12-month holding period is over. And we like being able to cash out our I-bonds anytime at face value and knowing the exact amount that we'll get in our bank account. And our tips, we use our tips as an inflation-protected retirement tool. And we plan on holding them to maturity. So the secondary market prices of our tips don't really matter to us. We like our tips for their higher real yields over I-bond fixed rates currently. What we do is simply keep an eye out on both the I-bond fixed rates and the tips real yields. And whenever we feel they're good enough, we pick some up. And with tips, we typically buy at auction. Now, I often get asked what's good enough for us. Everyone's financial journey is different, and who knows what the future holds, but for us, this 1.3% I-bond fix right here is good enough for us right now. And this 30-year tips auction with a real yield of 2.2%, that's also good enough for us right now. And if you're an I-bond and or tips fan, then stay tuned with us at Diamond Nest Egg because we'll keep updating you on what we think is good enough for us as time progresses and markets evolve. And if you're wondering at this point how much inflation protection you should have in your portfolio, then check out our Bond Masters link below this video because that is one of the topics we dive deeper into here in our intermediate level bond course. Right, so let's say that you do want to add some I-bonds to your portfolio now that you understand how they work. How do you actually go about picking up some I-bonds? Up next, the annual I-bond limit. And that, members and super savers, was I-bonds versus tips, taken directly from our foundational level bond course, Bond Beginners. Tips are a bit more complex and they do take a bit more time to understand. But if you're interested in inflation protection, want higher real yields than what I-bonds pay, and want to really understand whether you should be buying in upcoming tips auctions like this one here, then I invite you to join us in Bond Beginners, where we really dive into core bond basics, including one of my current most favorite topics, a one hour long module where I explain step by step all about tips, treasury inflation protected securities, and how to buy them, because these high rates won't be around forever. And as you can see from our website, Bond Beginners is designed for you if you're thinking about retirement, retiring soon, or are already retired and want to learn about the easiest, safest, and most cost-effective way to start investing in bonds. There are 10 modules and 80-plus dedicated online videos with about 9 hours of runtime, all organized in a logical way to speed up your fixed income learning. Your 12 months of exclusive access to Bond Beginners also includes four live online course sessions with Q&A, the first live Bond Beginners online course session is already scheduled for April 30th, so we look forward to welcoming everyone then. Plus, there are 120 plus of our Diamond Nest Egg trademark slides, our T-bill and bond tracker, as well as more super saving bonuses, as you can see here. The official price at the time of this taping for the entire Bond Beginners course will be only $300 and $99 for 12 months of exclusive access. And if you purchase both Bond Beginners and Bond Masters together, you save an additional $100. This is the most popular choice at the moment amongst our Diamond Nestic community. And when you have your foundational knowledge about bonds, Bond Masters would be the logical next step. Bond Masters is the intermediate level course on how to build a bond portfolio that you will be ready for after Bond Beginners. To learn more about Bond Masters or course renewal and refund policies, or if you need step-by-step -step instructions on how to enter the April coupon code, please check out this bond laddering video here, taken directly from our Bond Beginners course. We've also included your 15% April coupon code, BONDFANS2024, all lowercase, below this video, along with the links to both Bond Beginners and Bond Masters. And if you've already completed our bond courses, don't forget to complete the end of course survey. Or better yet, drop a comment below and let the community know what you thought. All right, member super savers, bond beginners, and other fixed income fans. As usual, I hope you enjoyed this detailed video on I-bonds versus tips and the insider sneak peek into bond beginners. See you again very soon, either here, 
in our member zone or in one of our brand new bond courses.